Coming up this Easter day, how a stressed out boss found a more rewarding life. And the couple with some special Easter eggs and bacon. Hello and welcome to Lichfield Cathedral, here in the heart of England and the stunning setting for our Songs of Praise celebration of the most important day in the Christian year, the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. The Easter story will be told to us by Bridget Forsyth and Chris Walker and we'll be singing some of the best loved hymns of the season. And we start with the traditional lighting of the Easter candle by the Bishop of Lichfield. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! A great traditional favourite, beautifully sung by the choir and congregation here at Litchfield Cathedral. Now our next hymn has a very familiar tune to it and you've probably sung it in the run up to Christmas, but on this occasion we sing it with words particularly appropriate to Easter.
first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. And then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, standing where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will fetch him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to my father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord.
businessman Andy McCosh helps to provide homes for people who are struggling to get onto the housing ladder. I've always enjoyed being able to respond to people's needs and affordable housing is a basic human need. Lots and lots of people in our society don't have the money to buy a home, particularly now. So for lots of people, the affordable housing that's, that's provided in developments like this provide their only real opportunity to have somewhere to live. To be able to build the homes for them is something that gives me a lot of motivation and a lot of satisfaction. Andy's had a hugely successful career, but in 1999, his health began to suffer. The company I'd worked for uh, for seven or eight years needed to establish a new division uh, specifically aimed at, at providing affordable housing. I took over that role but I was always nervous at the idea of being completely responsible for my own company and uh, really was finding the pressure uh, and responsibility rather too much. I was suffering from uh, depression and anxiety and I was also quite exhausted so I had to accept, and my doctor signed me off, that I needed some time to rest, recuperate and sort myself out. I was completely closed down and not really talking to anybody, um, and I would probably walk eight, nine, ten miles every day. The more time went by, I felt much more peaceful within myself, and I was able to try and give time to what it was I was here for and why I was here and actually found myself beginning to understand that there probably really was a God out there that uh, cared about me and overcoming all my old objections I found myself going to church for the first time uh, age 42 uh, on my birthday. I could really begin to feel Jesus calling then, you know, that constant calling and purpose and the beginning to understand about his love and his desire to look after us and, and bring us to him. After three months, Andy felt well enough to go back to work. The job's still very important and I still enjoy what I do very much, but it's one thing as opposed to um, you know, the main focus. <laughs> In the church, you're brought to people who live locally, who are your neighbours or uh, are in the village next door or whatever. That relationship begins to matter and it actually brings you back to some extent to the roots of, of proper local living. And people sometimes in just small groups can make a difference. However you approach Easter, it's really about the hope and the salvation uh, and the understanding of Christ's sacrifice. It's just so humbling, um, but also absolutely available to everybody. Uh, therefore, whatever your situation, the hope's there. And that's, that's a value that will never change for me now, I think. And having felt that presence uh, in my life, I, I can't see any way back from that which is great.
Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jan and Ivan Hughes' whole life changed five years ago on Good Friday. Ivan started to shuffle to the one side and I caught hold of his arm so I asked him what was the matter and I could see then that the left side of his face had gone and the left leg and arm had gone limp as well and I knew that he'd had a stroke. We phoned for the ambulance and then as soon as the ambulance had been phoned for, I was on my mobile phone and people were praying for him before paramedics arrived. The first person that I phoned for the prayer chain, her husband the previous year had a stroke on Good Friday, but unfortunately he passed away on Easter Sunday. So for me to phone and say it's Good Friday and my husband has now had a stroke, it was quite a shock, but she was the one that started the prayer chain off for me, and they all stayed with prayer over the next few days. With Ivan having the stroke, it, this then meant a big change in our lifestyle. Um, obviously, being self-employed, if you don't work, you don't earn. So we were living off savings. He did return to work eventually, but he's always been in the construction industry, which is very physical work, and it was too demanding for him, and we could see that his health was suffering. We decided that we would sell our retirement bungalow, which was absolutely beautiful, and buy another property to do bed and breakfast and try and earn an income off that. Jesus asked his disciples to go out and to spread the word. We're not all meant to be preachers and teachers, but we can spread the word in our own little way. So this is my church, this house is a gift from God, this is my little church, and for everyone that comes to my bed and breakfast, I pray for that person and ask for the Lord's blessings on that person. I'm the type of person that likes to look at every little detail and make sure that the little details are in the room that they have. And the father's like that. He cares about every little detail in our lives as well. And again, that is passing on the love of Jesus to other people. To see that they are loved as he wants us to love them. Okay. Uh, since we've been able to take on the bed and breakfast, and Ivan helps me run it. It's a partnership, we run it together. Okay. Life now looks far more secure than it has done for quite a few years. I'm sure that eventually that, yes, it will all come together and it will work because God's hands on it.
Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, have you no fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have caught. So Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153 of them. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dare ask, who are you? They knew he was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. Now this was the third time that Jesus had appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. God, who through the resurrection of Jesus Christ has given us the victory, grant you joy and peace in believing. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you this Easter and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Well, that's just about it for our Easter celebration from Litchfield Cathedral. Thank you so much for joining us. I do hope you've enjoyed it. We finish now with one of the most popular and inspiring of Easter hymns. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering sun. From me and from all of us here, a very happy Easter indeed. Next week, Diane Louise Jordan heads for Tyneside and catches up with people who are building bridges in their community and around the world, including one family who've moved lock, stock and barrel onto a floating hospital. And Stuart Townend returns to the Castlegate Centre for more songs of praise, old and new.